Welcome to Cram and Kirk and let us invite you to take a short tour around our attractive church. It's been a place of Christian worship since the 6th century and as you'll soon discover, it has a rich, unique history. You have come into the church through the tower door. The tower is the oldest part of the present building, dating back to the 15th century, with the parapet being added in 1811. The bell, which is always rung before morning worship, was made in Holland in 1619 and is inscribed with the words Michael Bergeroy's Fecit Me 1619 Solideo Gloria, made by me for the sole use of glorifying God. As was common with many Christian churches throughout Europe, the original building ran east to west. But when the building was extensively renovated in 1911, it was extended and now runs north to south. As you enter the church and turn left along the west aisle towards the north gallery, you will come to a stained glass window in memory of Robert Wilson of Inveramond. You will see a ship at the top of the window. The ship symbolises the mission of the church to preach the gospel to all nations and the symbol is also found on the pulpit cloth and the war memorial mosaic. Across the kirk in the east aisle is another stained glass window, also in memory of Robert Wilson of Inveramond. The Greek translates Christ the Victor. These words are also repeated on the war memorial. The bust to the left of the Wilson window is of Sir James Hope, builder of Hopeton House near South Queensbury, who died on the 27th of November 1661. On the wooden board on the west wall are the names of all the ministers of Cram and Kirk since the Reformation of 1560, when the Church of Scotland decided to institute its own Presbyterian form of government. In the 18th century, three of the Cramond ministers, William Hamilton and his sons Robert and Gilbert, became moderators of the General Assembly, the Supreme Court of the Church of Scotland. They were followed in 2016 when the Reverend Dr Russell Barr was appointed moderator. A number of the names of former ministers are worth noticing. The first is Robert Walker, who was a Fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh and was Minister at Cram and Kirk from 1776 before, in 1884, becoming Minister at the Kirk of the Canongate near the foot of Edinburgh's Royal Mile. Walker had been brought up in Holland, where he learned to skate, and he was painted by Sir Henry Rayburn skating on Duddingston Lock. Rayburn's iconic painting of the skating minister is on display at the National Gallery of Scotland. More importantly, Robert Walker was also one of the leading abolitionists in Scotland and did much to support William Wilberforce to bring an end to the slave trade in the United Kingdom. At the age of 79 years, George Muirhead was the oldest Church of Scotland minister to sign the deed setting up the Free Church at the Disruption of May 1843. At the General Assembly held at St Andrew's Church in Edinburgh's George Street, about 200 ministers and elders walked out of the established church and marched to the cannon mills to set up the Free Church with Thomas Chalmers being appointed as moderator. They left the established church over the question of patronage and the right of the congregation to call its own minister. Muirhead set up Cramond Free Church, which in 1929 came back into the Church of Scotland and is now Davidson's Mains Parish Church. Muirhead died in 1847. His remains were buried in Cramond Kirkyard and a copy of the Deed of Demission hangs in the Session House. There are four stained glass windows below the North Gallery celebrating four saints who have influenced Scottish religious life. St Andrew, patron saint of Scotland, whose day we celebrate on the 30th of November every year and whose cross, white saltire on blue, is shown on the war memorial. 
St Cuthbert, Bishop of Durham in Northumbria, which in his day extended to the Firth of Forth. St Columba, who came from Ireland in AD 563, bringing Christianity to Scotland. St Margaret, an Anglo-Saxon noblewoman who married King Malcolm, son of the King Duncan, immortalised in Shakespeare's Macbeth. Margaret is remembered for her piety, good works and institution of the fourth ferry crossing called Queensferry. Each saint carries something, three of which are normal objects, St Andrew's Bible and cross, St Columba's model of Iona Abbey and St Margaret's chalice. However, you might notice St Cuthbert is carrying the head of St Oswald, King of Northumbria, who was killed in battle against the Mercians in AD 642. One possible explanation is that St Oswald's head was kept in St Cuthbert's coffin even though St Cuthbert died 45 years after St Oswald. The inscription on one window tells us the windows were given by E and A W W in celebration of 38 years of happy marriage. The initials stand for Elizabeth and Dr Andrew Wallace Williamson and the four windows came from Dr Williamson's study. Dr Williamson died in 1926 and the windows were given to Cramonkirk by his widow in 1930. Under the North Gallery, there is a door which leads to the Session House. The Session House was added in 1955 and it is where a team of duty elders meet every Sunday to assist the minister with arrangements for Sunday morning services and work alongside the minister in every aspect of the congregation's life and worship. On the east wall of the sanctuary, there is a board with the name of the men and women who have served as session clerk at Cramond since the Reformation. The East Gallery is known as the Cramond Gallery. It has a separate entrance and stair and historically was where the owners of Cramond House would sit. The Craigie Halkett family were the last owners of Cramond House, the line ending with Miss Dorothy Craigie Halkett. 1893 to 1959. You will also find a blue velvet chair, which is said to have been used by Queen Victoria when she worshipped at Cramond in 1860, during a visit to Cramond House. Below the Cramond Gallery, a chapel was created as part of the Millennium Celebrations. The furniture was designed by one of the elders, Tom Gray, and made by a local craftsman, Ben Dawson. The baptismal font and candlestick holders are made from Ailsa Craig marble, the same marble used for curling stones. The wyvern digital organ is situated at the corner of the chapel. Originally, Cram and Kirk had no instrument to accompany the congregation's singing, predominantly psalms, until 1871, when it was decided to install a harmonium. The Kirk Session records reveal it was a controversial decision, with many parishioners unhappy by the introduction of the kist of whistles and preferring the singing to be led by a presenter. The main communion table is situated underneath the Barnton Gallery. Look closely and you will see a carved cross surrounded by a circle, the Celtic symbol for light. To the left of the table is the pulpit which bears the inscription This pulpit erected by parishioners and friends in loving remembrance of the Reverend James Alexander Milne, M.A., Minister of Cramond. The font is immediately below the pulpit, symbolising the close connection between word and sacrament. The font dates from the 1911 refurbishment of the church and it has the inscription The Gift of the Children. An original King James or authorised version of the Bible is one of the treasures of Cram and Kirk. To the right of the communion table lies the leather-bound book of remembrance given to the Kirk by the Women's Guild, now the Church of Scotland Guild, to celebrate its 95th anniversary in 1986. 
the book records the births and deaths of people connected to the congregation and parish of Cramond, and is open to correspond to each day of the year. Above the Book of Remembrance is the War Memorial, with details of the men of the parish who died in the First and Second World Wars of the 20th century. The Barnton Gallery was named after the local Laird's estates, and although the Barnton House itself was demolished in 1925, its parkland is now home to the Bruntsfield Lynx and Royal Burgess Golf Clubs. The three windows above the gallery are in memory of former owners of Lauriston Castle. To the right of the Book of Remembrance, there is a mosaic depicting the legend of Jock Howison, a peasant living at Crumman Brig, who came to the aid of a stranger being attacked by robbers, only to discover the stranger was no less than King James V. As a mark of his gratitude, the king granted Howison the lands of Brayhead, in return for which he was to provide the king with a ewer and basin for washing his hands whenever he passed Cram and Brig. As you leave, please enjoy a few moments walking around the kirkyard which surrounds the church. The oldest known grave, Robert Walker of Drylaw, died 1608, is found on the east wall and among the many and varied occupations of those buried in the kirkyard are a baker, two blacksmiths, a coal merchant, a tax collector, five doctors, two dentists, 24 farmers, four gardeners, eight members of the gentry, two inspectors of the poor, six lawyers, two JPs, 19 church ministers, including several former ministers of Cram and Kirk, a potato merchant, a policeman, a Lord Provost, four schoolmasters, a stableman, a tailor, a weaver, and three cartwrights. We hope you've enjoyed this tour of Cram and Kirk. For those of us who worship here, it's a sacred, a holy place. You'd be very welcome to come. But meanwhile, keep us in your thoughts, keep us in your prayers.